We do it periodically, we always get into bass lines. Today it's a melodic techno production video, namely bass. Stay tuned for that. Are you ready? Let's go do it right now. Check it out, I'm Analog Kitchen and thank you for checking out yet another video. Now if this is your first time here, do not hesitate to click subscribe and hit that notification bell. Whenever I upload a new video, you'll be kept in the loop and you'll not miss out on anything. Stick around till the end of this video, I'll tell you about the three new patrons this week. I'll tell you about this sexy looking merch that I have and I'll tell you about the community that's vastly growing on Discord. About today's topic, a lot of people fall into a certain pitfall when they try to produce music that they do everything at the same time. Now I try to organize my stuff in certain ways, you know that already. I've got this ABC structure where I'm looking at building a house, first the foundation, then the walls and everything. You just build your track up gradually and the main objective is the house should never collapse. This sounds a bit cheesy maybe, but the amount of times people come to me and they say like, mm, halfway in my production scheme I had to change the bass drum. Now with the ABC structure, that is something that cannot happen. It's like video game. You have to kill the end boss before you can advance to the next level. Bass comes in that same category. My bass lines are not something that I can just dream up. I have to just do it by means of hearing a certain groove. If I hear a groove, then all of a sudden it comes to me, but it never comes to me if I don't hear a groove. So what I've done, I've got seven drum loops that I did get out of sample packs. The unison chord pack, by the way, there were some really cool melodic techno drums in there, instead of making like a, a seven complete things. So of course it's not about the beats, it is about the inspiration of the beats, but it is about the bass line. So seven different bass lines. There is a Reese type bass line, very, very uh, wobbly. There is some sort of a dubstep kind of wobble bass line. I made an arpeggio bass line. There is sort of the long extended um, uh, melodic techno classic bass line. There's a progressive bass line in there and I've made seven. Now why the number seven? I think people in the chat by now, if you're watching the premiere, they know exactly why I've chosen. The number seven is the magical number. If I hear a groove, sometimes it, it, it tells me, do I need to play a lot of notes or do I need to just like back off a little bit? In any band, in any orchestra, in any place where multiple people are playing music together, this is a rule. Not everyone can run to the goal at the same time. So somebody needs to make way for somebody else. That's just how it works. Certain drum loops are very busy. They just don't leave a lot of room for you to just like go crazy on your new synth. Nice for the gas, leave it out there. So obviously what you need to do is find spots where it goes, where does the bass line move. And remember, I say it often, the groove is not the notes that are being played. Groove is the absence of notes being played. It's the gaps in between the notes that make up the groove. So certain bass lines have to start on the first measure, on the one. Other bass lines should never start on the one. And it, it depends. So there's plug-in bass lines today, there's FM bass lines, and then there is the classic Moog type bass line. And I've said the word bass line way too many times. So if it's a drinking game, you should be drunk by now. If not, let's go head to the live set and let's see if we can make another baseline video. You ready? Let's go. All right, so now let's play some beats first and then I'll tell you what I think works on those beats. The first beat that I have, so I've got seven yeah, and the track eight on the octave track. The octave track is the drum computer in my uh, operation. Um, and we're only going to focus on these two things. Now, mind you, the the bass lines are all samples. The midis, as I said, are available on my Patreon page. So uh, if you would like to use your own synthesizers, you can. I've not used the midis today because I do want you to also understand why I've chosen certain sounds and the way they work, okay? The first beat is this. So you can clearly hear that there's some sort of a bell in the background, some, something sitting in the background, right? Now, all the bass lines are eight bars long. So there is a small variety on the fourth bar and on the eighth bar. Let's go in and listen to what the first 
bass line does. I got it on pad mute, so they're all here. And what I've also done is I stuck the bass line out of a separate output of the Akai into the Acid Box 3, as I don't want to map out filters on the Akai. Today, I'm just going to use the Acid Box 3 for that. So, first bass line place. Let me play it again solo. A little bit of effect coming from the senses and one, on which I've got a digital delay and the black sky here. Now this is a classic uh, melodic techno bass line. You can debate that uh, Stefan Botson came up with this long extended notes and then some sort of an arpeggio thing towards the middle. It's going one, two, three, four, switch. One, two, three, and a long note, long, two, three, and then we go. And then here's a small variety. Exactly. Now, why does this work with this beat? Because this beat speeds up the groove. Because of that cadence, if you play a bass line that fast as well, it becomes a, it becomes a bit and nervous, I would say. And what you would like to do is space out certain elements to create longevity, uh, is what I'm looking for. Longevity for the dancer, the people on the floor, the people that are listening to your tune, they love to just like be taken away. So certain elements in your groove should go faster than other elements. So out of this bar five, six, seven, eight, two, three, four, when you listen to the groove, there are different things that don't even make it that far. So you can hear that the contrast is the busier the drums are, the longer I will play my bass line. I'm loving this. We're easing into this today. Got a bit of an effect going on here. It's rather loud. Let's make sure that it's not that loud as it is right now. So on CMB on the Octatrack, I've got the reverb map. So that if I open it up, it takes uh, the filter, which is on effect one, takes out uh, the low end, and then the reverb will go on effect two. And then you can uh, play around and go back in. Cool. Baseline number one, right? So I like it. Let's move to a different groove. Let's close this off. Second beat is this. Everything is on 125 BPM, by the way. Now, another groove where you can clearly hear that the tom is making a groove. Boom. I would like to say this groove in itself is an A category groove. Do you need a bass line? Not per se. So you have to come up with something that's really cool in order for this to work. Because this loop is already grooving, right? Okay, second bass line plays this. Triplets, right? So there's only two times when it starts on the one. So, and again, this is kind of a carousel or revolving door because um, you would like to make an infinite loop as well where your groove goes in a certain direction. Um, but the cadence is a different groove here. So what I've tried to do is I try to just place notes everywhere where there's no toms playing. So the toms do something very rigid, very straight, and then the bass line just dances around um, yeah, as a counter rhythm, which is also a big good trick to use. Counter rhythms will always work as well. I'm gonna open this up slowly, go in, filter this down. One, two, three, back in. Yeah, I'm liking this. I'm liking this. 
So, as I said, you can find these midis and the sounds also if you want to use them in your own production, you want to just fiddle around, you just want to uh, replay this video uh, with the sounds, you can find it on our patreon.com slash Animal Kitchen. Yeah? Okay. This concludes beat number two. Okay, I'm going to take this out. I'm going to go to beat number three. Entirely different beat altogether. Different things are happening. That really gives some sort of a hypnotic kind of flow, I'd say. I love the hypnotic uh, flow of that. And there's a ah uh, ah uh, clap here. Ah uh, ah. Uh. Tick tick. So, pop 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 pop. Call and response within the clave and the clap. Pop pop. And the clave goes pop 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 pop. Listen to it for a second. Nice clap, also a steady clap. A bit laid back. So now, let's play that bass line. Ah, oh, yeah. Let's listen to the bass in solo. This um, is a DX7 bass, so the DX7 is renowned, very fm -y, very 90s I would say, 80s almost, and um, when I've got these bright elements in the drums that we have here, it's always cool to have some sort of a, yeah, snappy bass line that's not too moogie. Moog basses are very thick, very round, and um, I tend to find that the FM type bass, where you work with operators and you have one oscillator uh, influence the other one, um, it gives off a little bit of a, of a more gritty character. And listen how that plays with the beat. Let's filter it down and see what it does. Now the trick when to use is to always make sure that if you make a bass line, if you program one, it needs to fit into this groove as a jigsaw puzzle. It should never be this uh, hairpiece that you can think away of somebody's head just because it doesn't match up. It needs to be there and you shouldn't notice it. Think of CIA, you know, the better you do your job with this stuff, the less people notice that you have borrowed stuff from different places. Let's go back, out, low, in, bass. So this is a snappy bass and it does two things. If I filter it down, there's still enough body for it to just carry the track. So if you would like to add a lead or you would add, like to add something else. Now I have tried to make this as simple as possible, meaning you would not need anything else than the bass line and the groove, which means if you're buying equipment, a simpler uh, sampler groove box with one synth um, uh, synthesizer should also get you there. So this is not the most expensive setup that you could use if you are trying to get what you're hearing right now. This is possible with not a lot of gear. So, yeah, I'm liking it. What else can I tell about, uh, say about that uh, bass line? I played it, let's go in and I'll show you what I can do with the sequence. I have played something that if you sample it, it's easy to do. On the Akai, I can say how much of the sample should be played. So if I take, put this on four, it's going to be, it's going to be steady. Let me put it on two. So you can up to go like, okay, let's, in, let's intro it like this. Here you go in. Simple, right? So, if you want to build up the track, build up your groove, you know, this is how I basically look at it. The sample is only playing, bump, you can see, bump, bump, bump. So the eight bar um, segment that I have is only playing one bar now to half of a measure, even one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Take out low, open the filter, and now it's going to play a full bass line. One, two. Bum, 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 bum. Because it takes a while for you to pinpoint where the notes are coming from, it's 
it's giving longevity again, right? Okay, cool. That's beat number three. Let's go back to my bad news and play the next one and take out this bass line, which is same beat as I had before, but I've added some things to it now. got some elements in the background, but, uh, but that, that, that side stick kind of very thin 606 type snare drum or an 808 even, but even um, added it. I think you need more hypnotic for this, right? So let's see what the bassline does. I'm not sure now. Let's see what we got. Bassline number four. Yeah, very wobbly. Putting up some tension. See how it goes with this roof. Simpler beat to make, you can just stick samples left and right and just work with uh, certain elements of, um, of reverb, which is cool. But the bass line is a very important part, so it always needs to just like take its place and work it. So I'm, I'm liking this, yeah. Very, a little bit more trancy maybe. It, I would play more stuff over this obviously as a bass line, but yeah, it's cool. I'm, I'm, I dig it. Okay. See what happens if we filter this down, shall we? Never forget to turn down uh, to close off the auxiliary sense, otherwise you get effects all over the place. Nice dub effect, by the way. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice if you're doing dub stuff. That's the D, uh, DD7, by the way. It's a really cool, um, cool effect to use for double effects. I'm liking this. Yeah, I'm liking that. I think this is a Juno, by the way. So those different things as well, and all these different synthesizers. Obviously, had. A different characteristic but nowadays it's widely available so you should to try out what works for you um if you have a novation peak i think you can get into some fm stuff there if you would like to if if you would like to um, uh, use different bass lines like i said the minis are available let's turn this off and um see what we can do with a different drum beat You can hear that the, the, the kick drum is sort of less a power, but uh, the, 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 the drive of the groove is in the middle of the section. So also a very busy loop. So I'll probably build around that. that. That should be the element that everybody's dancing on, so I don't want to do that with the bass line as well. Let's see what happens here. There you go, my arpeggio baseline. On the midis you can decide whatever effect you would like to stick on there yourself, obviously. I put a bit of delay on there. This is the same thing that I did just now. Open up the groove. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, 
If you'd like to just like build a little bit of tension on your groove, this is easy to do if you've got the midis obviously, then what you should do is play that note straight. Now the bass line is just going to go, it's going to stay on the same root note. Bam, 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 bam. And then it plays around with the toms within the um, uh, drums that you hear now. Take a filter it now. Nice man, I'm liking this. Taking that low here. Open up some. Uh, Full baseline. Open the filter. Fill it back up. Reverb on the drums. Three, four, low end, filter out. Obviously this is a complete drum loop. Usually I have my drums all spaced out and I can do whatever I want. For now, for the sake of this uh, video, I just wanted to just like get into a simpler kind of approach, right? Okay, are you ready to go to number three? Let's check it out. What else we got? Yeah, a little bit more techno, but still something that's also an infinite loop with the call and response. Boom, one thumbs there. Bam. Yeah, I'm digging this beat. I'm digging this beat. I'm digging it. Okay. This bass line should be very long as well, I think, because everything is going in that... You can hear that the, the, the tom and the hats are in the same key. The kick, not so much, but the tom and the hat are in the same key, so that means that as they're... So they've got a bit of a melody in the drums working already, if you listen to it. Bam. Okay, let's play our bass line, see what it does. Woo, dirty. There's the Reese bass line. Let's filter it down, that's very powerful. Yeah. And then you play around with the bass, fill it up. So you can hear that it's more for a later time in the night, you know what I mean? This is more if you want to build up some power. Let's do another round, building up the reverb. Never be in a hurry. Just take it slow. Get into the groove, feel the groove. Feel the room, feel the vibe. Never hurry. Cool. Open up the filter here. Kick in, reverb out. This is the move modular, by the way, that I've used. And there was a boat filter on there as well of this specific uh, sound, so there was a lot of stuff that was happening with this bass sound already. So, if you play very long notes, it'll be nice to have some filter movement, some 
LFO movement on the sound so that the sound in itself travels while it does a rhythmical thing within the LFO of the sound not so much where the notes are being played so this is basically five in the morning head in the speakers kind of vibe obviously but um, oh yeah has to be done I think I can take you into the last of the drums and the last of the bass line uh, let me know in the comment section if you're digging this by the way if you're dancing by the way uh, which is uh, mandatory should be dancing all right let's get this wrist blade out and a different beat no beat cool there's the beat now I've tried to make a cross between progressive house and techno and maybe some elements of trance because I do think that within that cross pollination that crossover uh, stuff there's a lot of cool things that happen as I said in the intro this um, this music is, is it's open to for interpretation really you know it's, it's open and you can do different styles different stuff um, and that's what I like so okay I'm not even sure what the last bass line is going to be all about so what I'm going to do is uh, be like you guys take out the drums and hope for the best people oh very new wavy yeah mm -hmm. this is a CS80 by the way that I made this with so then you know what kind of character uh, sound it is building up the groove Cyrus, Trent and Marcus Osmers are the new patrons for this week. Guys, thank you so much for checking it out and thank you for following and supporting. This is a cool thing and you came in the right spot because the midis and the audio, everything you heard me do today is available on Patreon for you to check out at your at will if you would like to do so so that's how that works so that's on um, patreon.com slash analog kitchen and then there's the bridge to discord because the discord app is a very very cool one uh, originally started for the gamer industry i think uh, gamers used it and now us synth lovers can use it as well because you can do video chats which is probably what's going to happen after this video after the video premiere if you're watching it live you smart 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 person um and um, we talk about everything. We talk about how to connect your stuff, what is a good synthesizer, what, what to buy, what not to buy, how to package it, how to make your fly case, um, how to make tunes, helping each other out with productions. Uh, and you can get closer to me. If there's uh, more questions than answers that you have, that's never a good thing, I think. So you can get close to me and I will explain um, gladly on how I got to the point of what my journey was, is, and what I expect to do in the near future so uh, and it, prov it proves that it has proven to be a very fruitful um, yeah, place I love it I like to do I like to be there so do check it out now um, that's how I run my bass lines I mean I have played in bands I've played with bass players I've played with drummers and I do think that the rhythm section is a very strong thing and I do believe the dance music especially with progressive house I do think progressive house is one of the most um, musical forms of electronic music where there are different things possible. I mean, different eras, eras come together, I should say. Um, so if you want to do an FM bass line, it's possible. If you want to do a classical MOOC type deep bass line, that also is possible. And I really like the fact that it sets you apart a little bit more or you can just like space out what you want to be or where you want to go with your sound a little bit better um, as I really hate to be stuck in a rut I used to make one this one specific sound of music and at some point I was like ah sometimes you wake up in the morning and you, so you just don't want to make that kind of music because you just don't feel like it and that, so I think giving yourself freedom within your production um, um, scheme is true freedom for yourself you know it's, it's making it fun otherwise it becomes a job which is what it sometimes becomes any so it'll be cool to 
be free and, and do whatever you would like to do. Now, if you don't get it at first, you have to just like keep going at it. After a while, it becomes clear what you can do, where you should go, how you should come about it. And I do think that these videos are going to help you out to get to your goal a little bit sooner. Now, I was uh, recording for Analog Courses, uh, the course that is long awaited, but it's coming. I was recording this week and I was like, yeah, this might be a good topic also to do because this is exactly how I approach my bass uh, lines. Now, uh, that course, uh, the, especially the uh, electronic songwriting for melodic techno, that course, um, it is everything other courses are not. I will try to just like really tell you why something works instead of how something works. I mean, I don't think you're, you're um, interested in knowing uh, what the knobs on certain compressors uh, do if you don't know why you should use it in the first place. So I'm really looking into my career on how it works for me, how my music works and it's been trial and error for me. So obviously the stuff that I just bumped my head on, you should avoid that. That's why that course is going to work out. So yep, videos are being recorded. I'm very happy for that. Stay tuned for that, analogcourses.com. Am I still talking? Yes, you are. Okay, about time to shut up and get out of the dodge. I'll catch you guys in the chat. If not, thanks for watching. Next week, another video. Keep watching this space. Do check out the sexy merch that I'm wearing. Ah, can you believe it? I think that this might be the first time in three years of this channel existing that I've worn anything other than black. <laughs> ah, well, it's a wondrous world after all. Thank you for watching. I'm Animal Kitchen and I'm out. Catch you. Peace.